and physically could and I appreciated the view that I had from up here however I came to the conclusion that this was as high as I was going to go and I wasn't going to risk life or limb trying to get to the top if I didn't feel confident and comfortable in doing so. I'll get up to the top one day, just not today. <laughs> See, there is a bit of a uh, footpath here. Well, folks, that's John from the Gel Builder and uh, Off Track Explorer. He's just done a video on Mount Lindsay, and uh, and I strongly, obviously, as usual, suggest you go and watch it. It's fantastic. This isn't about climbing Mount Lindsay. This is about the rocks that John walked past while he was on Mount Lindsay because some of them are very interesting and I was quite surprised to see some of them. I wasn't expecting them. So anyway, let's have a bit of a dive into the Mount Lindsay geology. And uh, John, I hope uh, your off-track exploring channel does very well. Let's go. Well, folks, here we've got John looking wistfully out across the countryside. As much as I like looking at that Hungarian nose profile, John, this is what we're interested in, this stuff here. And uh, I think what we're looking at is a rhyolithic agglomerate. Hmm, big word, conglomerate, sedimentary, agglomerate. Same sort of thing, but much nasty. Much nastier beginning. Uh, basically, it's a lithic rock, which uh, a clastic rock, which means it's got... Uh, it's made up of other bits of other rock. Uh, you see it here, I think what we're looking up top here is ash, is a rhyolitic ash like tuff, but I don't think it's welded as hard as the Brisbane tuff is. And then uh, when you come down here, you can see all the little bits of rock and stuff in there. That is definitely uh, an agglomerate right there. And here it's pretty obvious. You can see the chemistry here is quite green and all the little bits in there. Uh, and how does this form? Well. It forms in a fairly violent way, actually. Um, here we have uh, a volcano in uh, Japan called the Mount Unzen volcano, and its lava dome collapsed. And flowing down the valleys is a pyroclastic flow. Pyro, hot, you know, clastic rocks. Uh, this unfortunately killed quite a number of people, including some very uh, famous volcanologists. We won't talk about that today, though. But as you can see, this is a seriously violent thing. These chiroplastic flows weren't quite as bad as that because they uh, only slide, they think about three degrees, but still nasty stuff. So here's Mount Lindsay. So how did we get here? Well, our old mate Alan Cunningham, of course, and this moron. No, he wasn't a moron, he was just a nut job. Uh, Patrick Logan, of course. Uh, Sir uh, Major Mitchell uh, came along and he named it after this bloke. Patrick Lindsay. So that's how it got its name. If you want to see the long version, look at my Mount Marty video. I'm not doing that again. So let's have a quick look at the structure of this, the macro structure. Here we have a terrace, they call that the level, but you can see there are distinct levels in this mountain. And this is not a volcanic plug. This is just a big layer cake. There's actually another one down here, but it's been filled with all the, uh, and you notice there's a slope. It slopes about 10 degrees, but it wasn't 10 degrees when it was formed. We'll talk more about that in a bit. So let's have a look where we are. So here we are, of course, this time we're in orbit. We're at the height of a geostationary satellite. We're not at the same level, they'd be up over the equator. But here we are, and we're gonna drop down, because you haven't done this for a while. Get sick of flying through the high rise in Brisbane. Uh, that weather's current, by the way. I'm, I'm actually doing this in uh, June uh, 2023, so that was the weather as of today. We're just going to drop down. We're going to have a quick stop here at the height of um, the ISS. You can see the Mulumbar Volcano, the Great Dividing Range there. And uh, we'll drop down again a little further because, you know, we can. And we'll stop again. We'll have a look at the, the Focal Peak. Uh, assembly, which is right there with Mount Barney. This is the height of a jet airliner, about 33,000 feet, something like that. And we'll come down a little further now, and there's Mount Barney right in the middle, and uh, we're just going to duck down to Mount Lindsay. Quick flip down, 
and there's the whole complex. The uh, Focal Peak um, Caldera in the background, Mount Barney and Mount Lindsay. So let's have a look at the map. It's a map of it. Um, how old is this thing? About 28 million years old. It's about the same age as all, all of this happened over a period of about 4 million years. All of it, start to finish. And then it moved on. That just cooled down and everything shrunk. So we see Mount Barney in the middle, Focal Peak, that's important, we'll come back to that. Here's Mount Lindsay down here. Mount Lindsay was not a volcano. Okay, Mount Lindsay is an agglomeration of a volcanic garbage. Here's the Focal Peak, this most definitely was a volcano. Uh, there's the cold air around the outside with the plug in the middle. Uh, it's now got andesite in it, but it actually, when it first started, it started erupting basalt. This is a close-up of that stuff behind, behind John there when he was in his picture. And you can see this is full of bits because this is a chloroplastic flow that ran from the from uh, from the focal peak and quite a lot of it I might add there is 60 meters of this stuff this is what it looks like this is not it but it's something that looks like an agglomerate a tough agglomerate you see the ash welding all the bits together this one's just pretty so there is 60 meters of agglomerate on here and 160 meters of andesite so we'll have a look at this not andesite I'm sorry right like Here's the whole complex. You see the focal peak, the purple bit with the red dot in the middle. That was the volcano. Mount Barney, that whole red complex, never came to the surface. That hardened under the ground. All right, so that's, it's not nothing to do with this, but it isn't part of this particular story. Here's Mount Lindsay. Uh, what we've got there is the green, actually, are the uh, Ipswich coal measures. They're still out here. And everything else is basically uh, either uh, rhyolite or rhyolitic, let's call it garbage, agglomerates. Let's have a quick fly around here. You see Mount Barney over there, the two peaks. Um, this is done in Queensland Globe. Uh, as you can see, the 3D mapping of the surface this is not perfect. They just wrap a satellite photo over the uh, three-dimensional data so the cliffs don't really show up. But the uh, three-dimensional shape is very accurate and you've really, you can see why John got to that level and went, holy hell, I need a rope. He said he wouldn't use someone else's rope, but then he did just a little bit. But anyway, he knows what he's doing, let me tell you. So there we are. It is a serious piece of mountain. Um, the New South Wales border running right over the top. You'd have to ask what Muppet did that. It makes border things really hard. Just, uh, just under 1,500 metres high. Not particularly high compared to the other mountains down here. Um, and what you've got on top there is an andesitic cap. We'll have a look at that in some photos just a little further down. Here I've mapped the uh, geology over the 3D LiDAR. So you can see um, the volcanics uh, extend. Now, this thing is taller than it should be. They think it's up to a thousand feet taller than it should be because of uplift. When this was created, I said earlier that the they, they think the uh, Agglomerates were formed at three degrees, but then this thing now slopes at 10 degrees because that whole focal peak assembly with Mount Barney shoved underneath it uplifted this entire area. They think some of the basalts around here, the Kyogal basalts, uh, were actually formed at sea level. Uh, and after this, this volcano started producing basalt, then it switched to producing rhyolite and even andesite and trachyte. It's all down here. So here we are. You can see this is a serious bit of mountain. Um, and I would definitely have a look at the LiDAR before I tried to walk up here and see where I picked the tracks. Let's look at some photos of it. Here it is. It's a glorious thing. Uh, it looks like it's wearing a, a Liz Hidden style hat, you know, the old Bush Tucker man. Uh, but these uh, cliffs are very vertical. Yes, of course, there are Muppets like this that could probably free climb it. This guy, I so see, he's actually got a rope, good man. And this is obviously not on Mount Lindsay, but it's such a good photo. And here it is erupting. Well, not really. It's a bushfire. As you can imagine, this thing gets hit by lightning from time to time. And if it's dry, you're gonna get a fire up there. It looks quite spectacular. It's really devastating because that ecosystem up there is, you can imagine, some of it's fairly unique and you do not want to see these things burn out. Fire is a natural part of the Australian bush. It's gonna happen from time to time. Uh, after this fire, some uh, people jumped on, they climbed up here. There you go, John, if you wanna know the way, that's the way they went. Looks pretty bad to me. And uh, they did a survey of the top after it was burnt. So uh, here we are, you can see the exposed uh, rhyolite there. That stuff's as hard, it rings like a bell. It doesn't generate soil. That's why it's still there. And you can see the fire caused quite a bit of damage. It did grow back. Oh, look at that, John, you did make it to the top. 
uh, you know, maybe not. But uh, it is certainly a very spectacular mountain. And uh, I hope you do make it up there someday, John. By the way, if you haven't gone over and checked out John's new uh, Explorer off, off Track Explorer channel, you should. It's a bit of fun. Great stuff. Well, that's it for the Mount Lindsay geology, folks. Um, Cabbage Street Creek coming soon. Had to go and reshoot some of it. My damn camera went flat on me like a moron. I forgot to charge it. Anyway, very unprofessional. That's me. Uh, thank you to all the new subscribers. Great to see you. I've started a new series called T Rocks Doing It in the Dark. Check it out. There's a playlist there. Just ultraviolet lights and a bit of photography. Keep rocking. T Rocks out.